Good morning. Today is Thursday, the 19th of August, and our opening prayer is from Psalm 43, verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O oh, come, let us adore him. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures from generation to generation. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. O come, let us adore him. Psalm 13 How long will you utterly forget me, O Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I seek counsel in my soul, and be so vexed in my heart? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Consider and hear, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, that I sleep not in death, lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him. For if I am cast down, those who trouble me will rejoice. But my trust is in your mercy, and my heart is joyful in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because, because he has dealt so lovingly with me. Indeed, I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel, beginning with the seventh chapter, the first verse. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies. The king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do what is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell, da tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved, with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commended, commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, 
that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as, as formerly. For the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, you shall, they, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be, a father, be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. When he commits iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words, and in accordance with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, that what is <clears throat> and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come, and this is instruction for mankind, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God, because of your promise, and according to your own heart, you have brought about all this greatness to make your servant know it. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. And there is none like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, Israel, the one nation on earth whom God went to redeem to be his people, making himself a name, doing for them great and awesome things by driving out before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, a nation and its gods? And you established for yourself your people Israel to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God, and now, O Lord God, confirm forever the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, and, and do as you have spoken. And your name will be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true. You have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. 
We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the epistle of St. Paul to the Philippians, beginning with the first chapter, the twelfth verse. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having be become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed, indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from good will. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but <clears throat> thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand, hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your presence. Strengthen our faith, our walk, our witness. Help us to truly stand with each other, both physically and spiritually, side by side, for the work of the gospel, to encourage this world to accept Jesus as their Savior and Lord, 
to see Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promise to David and to Abraham and to the patriarchs, and to be a witness, a living witness, to the marvels of God, the miracles and love of God through his Son, Jesus Christ, for everyone in this world. Amen. Well, I mentioned this yesterday about Paul and how he is not using his imprisonment as a pity party, but indeed is thanking God, in a sense, for it, because he realizes what's happened to him has advanced the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says right at the very beginning, the whole imperial guard and all the rest know that I'm imprisoned for my witness of Jesus. And so he says, you know, people are taking um, strength out of this witness that God has given me. And then he talks about those, some who preach about Jesus uh, out of uh, love and goodwill and others out of envy who are seeking to somehow hurt uh, Paul by them being free to proclaim Christ and him being imprisoned. And he, he doesn't care. He, he says, only in every way, whether pretense or truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in that I rejoice. And then there's that wonderful call of rejoicing. Yes, and I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Now he talks about how, you know, his deliverance, there, there are two aspects of that. His freedom of the flesh, that is being released from prison, or more importantly, his freedom from this world to, to if you will, die in Christ and in the hope of Christ to be with Christ and resurrected with Christ. And so he talks about this as a little bit of a struggle. But look at verse 21. I think we can draw strength from this as the early church did. That's that call of having courage always in Jesus, honoring with our bodies, whether in life or death. Here's Paul in 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You see, he, he has a perspective a perspective that the world doesn't have. The world says, take as much as you can, keep as much as you ha can, grasp as much as you can, live as long as you can, because the world has no answer to the after life. But as C.S. Lewis put it so, so wonderfully, for us, it's life after life. It's the everlasting life. And so, you know, Paul is very clear. He even talks about a bit of a struggle. He says, I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to die, basically. It is to depart and be with Christ. He says that's far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on our account. And so he's going to continue to do what's necessary. And then he calls the church, the body of Christ, verse 27, let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let your manner of life be worthy. And that's a calling for us to live in righteousness and holiness under Christ. And being, quite frankly, honest that we fall short. We need help. Remember our colic for this week. We'll pray it again in a few minutes. Is a prayer that acknowledges, you know, without the grace and mercy of God, we fall. We fall flat down on our faces. It's called sin. It's our default. But through the grace and mercy of God, again, pay attention to the colic, the prayer for this week. We're petitioning, you know, give us those things that are good and keep us from those things that are harmful. And so, for us, let us rejoice as Paul in Christ. And let us look for that day where we will be united with Jesus in life after life and that we will have the fullness of life in Christ, adopted sons and daughters, members of the kingdom, children of God. And that's not just a special little invitation to a group of small people. Christ died on the cross. In fact, talking in Bible study last night, one of our members shared something that had touched her deeply. Uh, and it, 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 it's, you need to picture in, the, in your mind's eye, Jesus on the cross. And she said what struck her was the statement that the nails didn't hold Jesus to the cross. Love did. Let me repeat that. The nails did not hold Jesus to the cross, but love did. Not our love for him, 
but his love from us. Think of the colic that talks about his desire to embrace us from the cross, that saving embrace. That's for all of humanity. Yes, the promise that God made to David, David of an everlasting kingdom, that's fulfilled in Jesus. And God loves his chosen people. But his love for the world is so great that he uses his chosen people and brings Christ to embrace the entire world in his love. And his call is not just to a group of folks living in the Middle East, but for the entire world. The cosmos, his creation. Let's continue now with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Keep your church, O Lord, by your perpetual mercy. And because without you the frailty of our nature causes us to fall, keep us from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life-giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them <clears throat> a zealous love of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings. I think most of you are aware of all the uh, things going on in this world, and, and you probably know things that we don't know. And so this is that time to lift up to the Lord those things that the Holy Spirit has pressed upon your heart and on your minds. And I would simply add to that list that I believe you already know a request to pray for the people in the Gulf and Mexico, in particular where the um, tropical storm, we've, we've had Fred here on the east coast, coast but there's an, a storm that developed and is headed uh, for uh, central Mexico. And we have our friends, the Griffith, uh, Griffiths, um, uh, Joanne and, and, and Roger Griffin, who are missionaries um, in, in, in central Mexico. And um, guess what? This hurricane, this storm is headed straight their way. Uh, so please keep the people there in your prayers 
in addition uh, to the various concerns with Haiti, Afghanistan, floodings, etc. Let us pray. I ask for your prayers for students as they return uh, back to school, whether it be um, lower grades all the way up to university. I pray against this pandemic and for protection and guidance and for us to um, seek not ourselves and our own will, but the will and best the good of others in agape love. And I especially pray for the students uh, in Orangeburg and the shooting that occurred, I believe, on the second day of school, where uh, two or three students were shot. And uh, apparently um, they have one in custody, uh, a person in custody. Lord, I, I just hate that school has begun and the news is the fear of contracting COVID and sharing that, super spreaders, and the fear of students being shot at school here in the United States. Lord, help us to tone down our anger and self-righteousness and pride and all of those things that lead to violence. And I pray for those children that have been exposed to this violence and teachers and family members and staff and police officers for their protection. Lord, I just I lift up students around this country. I lift up our country for your saving grace that we so desperately need. Oh, help us, Lord. Please join with me now in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, 
by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. I look forward to worshiping with you tomorrow for morning prayer on Friday and ask for your prayers for our Bible study tonight at Holy Cross. Thank you and God bless you.